Welcome to the abortion debate. Is abortion ethical? I'm joined by uh, Kate Smurthwaite. Thanks, Kate, for coming, um, of Abortion Rights UK, and uh, Bernadette Smythe of Precious Life. Welcome. And welcome to our audience. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, the structure of the debate will be similar to the previous ones. We will have five minutes uh, opening statements from each side then each side will have an opportunity to respond. We'll also be showing uh, the Twitter feed, uh, hashtag abortion debate, and you can also join us by Facebook and email and text. And this uh, first hour will be a studio debate, so we won't have live interaction from you, the audience, but then the second hour, we will be opening the phone lines and we'll bring in uh, your contributions on the Twitter, Facebook, and email and text. So we're going to start off with the opening statements and uh, we will start with Bernadette. Good evening. Well, um, many of you um, will be aware that I have been campaigning uh, for the protection of the unborn for the last 17 years. I have been um, active uh, in government. I'm an activist on the street. I support women in crisis pregnancy and I also um, help women after abortion. Being from Northern Ireland where abortion is illegal um, has clearly shown to the world the, the fact that where we protect unborn children, we protect women. Abortion uh, destroys women's lives. There's two victims in every abortion. The unborn child who loses their lives during the abortion and also the after effects that abortion has on women. Um, Ireland North and South is the safest place for women um, to give birth to a baby, to be pregnant. And I think that that is, ha is clearly shown that where women have psychological problems, where women have physical, um, medical uh, problems in pregnancy, um, living in Ireland, they get the best maternal uh, care. Women in Ireland, um, um, have the, we have the lowest maternal death rate <coughs> from all causes, um, so which really clearly shows that where you protect unborn children, you protect a mother. Um, <coughs> there's been a massive threat over Ireland for the last number of years, specifically the North where I represent, um, to extend the 1967 Abortion Act. But when we look to see the results of the 67 Abortion Act, we see that um, women now are coming forward with stories of how they regret abortion, how they were uh, never informed of the consequences of abortion. And when we talk about choice, uh, many of those women um, had never been given that information to, to make a fully informed choice. And obviously the unborn child was never given a choice. Every child is, um, should be protected from that moment of conception. I believe human rights begins in the womb. And as a campaigner for the protection of the unborn child, I can see the results of informing women of the consequences of abortion and, um, and the effects that, that that has on them. So I've been part of uh, an, uh, an organisation where we have been helping uh, women through those crisis pregnancy. And I can honestly say over the last 17 years, I've never had a woman come back to my office or come back to any of my colleagues with a baby that they, ha uh, that they um, had regretted having. But I've had women who have not ha been informed, had went for abortion and come back uh, regretting that abortion. The whole argument here is about the right to life. Everyone deserves that right to life and that right um, should begin in the womb. And I think being from Northern Ireland, being the last one of the last remaining countries in the world, in Europe, where abortion is illegal, I think that we can show the rest of the world that protecting an unborn child protects their mother. Okay, that was swift. You didn't use up all your time, no. so we can maybe give you some time later. Kate? Um, yeah, sure. So, um, first of all, I, I, I guess I would call myself pro-life in the sense that I'm in favour of human life. And um, I'm not sure that it really means anything to be alive if you don't have control over your own physical body, like the right to make your own choices about your own body. Now we, I'm sure at some point in the next hour, will get bogged down in this discussion about where life begins, and I'll come to that in a minute. But let me just to start with, let, let's just accept uh, Bernadette's suggestion that it starts at the, at the millisecond of conception, um, that that tiny cluster of cells constitutes a human being that therefore deserves all the rights and protections that a human being has. Let's imagine that that tiny embryo is a human being. In fact, you know what? 
Let's imagine it's Bernadette. Let's imagine that Bernadette is sat here right now and she is going to die unless she is hooked up to my liver, my lungs, my blood supply, my heart, unless my organs are used to support and sustain her life. Would anybody make it the law that I have to do that? No, of course not, because it's my body. And even if her life is at risk, anybody in this world would say it's still my choice whether or not I donate the use of my organs, my blood supply, every aspect of my body, because being pregnant means that the whole of your body is being used to sustain uh, this, this embryo or this fetus. Um, so I think that, I think that it, the issue of when life starts doesn't matter, because I think that ultimately, even if this is a life, we still have the right to choose. If you don't, then what you're effectively saying is that at any point in a woman's life, she can lose her right to be a human being, and instead she becomes, against her will, she is forced to be an incubator for a child that she doesn't want. I don't think that's a fair way to treat any human being, and it's not a life if that's how you're treated. Now, secondly, I said we're going to talk about... Um, when does life begin? And I hear this raised so often, when does life begin, when does life begin? And I think that what we're, what we're misunderstanding here is the need to have a specific point. In actual fact, um, most of us in this room probably aren't vegetarian, um, but most of us probably wouldn't eat a monkey or a gorilla. We'd go, oh, no, they're a bit like us, aren't they? That's, oh, I think, I think they, maybe they have a little bit more consciousness than us. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say no at that point. Um, people who are vegetarian, quite a lot of them still eat fish. The ones that don't eat fish, most of them aren't too bothered if they stand on an ant. The reality is that life isn't something that happens at a millisecond in time. It's something that has evolved over millions and millions of years. And it's something that develops in the womb. And a tiny cluster of cells, it starts out after a period of time, it starts to look more like a life and more like a life. And at some point, you could take it out and it would continue to survive. And at that point, of course, I don't think that women should be aborted. them. At that point, I think if you really don't want to be pregnant, you should induce birth and indeed uh, hand the, uh, the, the little baby over to somebody who wants to look after it if you don't. Um, now, so what instead we're talking about is a potential life. And in actual fact, to talk about trying to protect a potential life is completely misleading. There is potential life all around us. In fact, potential life is being lost by the fact that I'm not having sex with Tim right now. Um, but still, that's my choice and probably his. Um, but the point is that we don't say just because there is the potential for life, we must go and get that life, we must go and create that life, we must go and develop that life. We don't have that attitude. There are millions of uh, embryos in, that have been frozen from women who want to have uh, children, and I don't think that we should go around saying as soon as an embryo has been frozen, you now have to have it implanted. Maybe women should be dragged off the street and forced to have a frozen embryo implanted in them. I don't think anybody wants that. I don't think anybody really believes that. And when we're talking about potential life, let's not forget that there are thousands of people out there in the world today who exist precisely because their mother was able to get an abortion that meant she could continue her studies or develop her career or get her life on track. So instead of having one traumatic child that she wasn't ready for, that she didn't have the resources to look after, instead she's got two or three happy, well-looked-after, well-loved children that simply wouldn't exist in any other context. So that's, my, uh, that's my, my kind of straightforward statement. Um, I would respond to a couple of things uh, that Bernadette said. First of all, she calls herself an activist on the street. Let's be clear about what that means. She and her group stand outside family planning clinics. They harass women. They scream at women. They open car doors. They tell women, even women who have come in for reasons that aren't even to do with abortion, women who've come in because they're in serious medical difficulty and they need advice, women who've come in to deliver cupcakes, frankly, get screamed at, harangued and harassed. It's absolutely horrible and disgusting. Secondly, she talks about Ireland's low maternal death rate. Well, yes, Ireland has a very low maternal death rate, although, incidentally, um, that's because she's using odd statistics. It's risen quite a lot recently. Um, more importantly, 140 women a week come from Ireland, the Republic and the north of Ireland, over to other parts of the UK to get an abortion. So she's not solving a problem. It's being exported. We know that women in Ireland who want an abortion, they don't decide not to have one. They get on a boat. That's the, the whole reason that there isn't much more fuss about women dying um, from need of an abortion in Ireland is simply because Ryanair flights are so cheap at the moment. That's what's going on. Um, and if we're going to talk about maternal death rates, and we haven't used the word Savita Halapanava, I'd like to know how Bernadette feels about contributing to her unnecessary death as a result of not being able to access an abortion. And finally, I would like 
to address the suggestion that abortion is bad for women. And I'll address it simply in this way. There are definitely people who make all sorts of decisions in their life and go on to feel good about it or feel bad about it. Of course, the ones that feel good about having had an abortion, they're not going to go back and talk to Bernadette. In fact, a lot of them talk to me and a lot of them will have had the experience of being relieved and grateful. And I know about this because I've had an abortion and I had it at a time when I really couldn't have handled having a kid and I really didn't want to be pregnant. As soon as I knew I was pregnant, I immediately knew that this wasn't something that I was ready for. It wasn't something that I could deal with at that time. And I was incredibly grateful to be living at the time in a place where I was able to access that service, not least because I know otherwise I would have ended up in the back streets and I might not even be here to talk to you about this today. Thank you. That was well timed. Thank you very much. Um, your turn, Bernadette. So you can answer, answer the points that um, have been made. Well, I think Kate has lost sight of the whole argument because we're not, an unborn child is not a potential person. It's a child with potential but I said from that, that I said, moment of you, conception. So we you, agree that it's a I human being. Be it's a, a human being. We a human haven't being. agreed on that, but I've, I've humoured you and said, OK, if we agree, we even, I even suggested, what if it was you? Would you insist that you be hooked up to my internal organs in order to but keep me alive? But we're talking about a separate human being here. Yes, we're and not you are a separate human being separate, to me. Yes, and so an unborn child is a unique individual. And so are you. Scientifically proven human being. And we do not have the right to take the life of that human being. But if you, if, Whether if you he, are the mother or not, it's a unique human being. Bernadette, if the only thing that would keep you alive is a kidney donation from me, should I be compelled to donate well, that a kidney? Mother, as a mother, every mother will do everything to protect her child, her unborn child. As a mother every of four children, mother, as a mother yes. of four children, I myself have been uh, through a pregnancy where a child has been reliant, a unique individual, but as, as well as a, an unborn child, a born child relies on a, a mother to sustain that child's life. Your arguments can, can be applied to a human or to a born child, a toddler, for example. Yeah, if you if take from that moment of conception, the con the, a life is a continuance. We continue through life. We develop right through to become a toddler. What's the difference? What's the difference, well, the difference in an unborn child than a born child than a toddler, me, a teenager? What's the difference? Let me. The difference is that when a once a child has been born, if a woman is unwilling or unable to look after it, she can give it to somebody else to do that. And that's what adoption is. That's what happens when well, a child is born. That's what a woman born. can do through pregnancy if she feels she, you, that you, she no, can No, 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 you can't. No, I can't yeah. have a fetus taken out of my woman put in yours. It doesn't work like that. Well, so if I don't want to be pregnant, so you don't believe the in, options... you don't believe in destroying a life after birth, what's the difference? What changes? Well, the difference is that at that point, the life is not physically dependent on using mine and only my organs. That life is not living inside me, helping itself to my kidneys, my lungs, all of those things. But it has its own kidneys, it has its own lungs. Which are not developed, yeah, and therefore exactly. they're not being and used. So how is it alive if it hasn't got kidneys and, and lungs? A child, and we, it can't a child throughout pregnancy, a child that's born, what is the difference in that child? It's a human being, we respect, we give equal rights to the but unborn child. Saying. And it, as, a exactly as a I'm feminist saying. myself, you know. So don't make me yeah. laugh. As oh, a feminist I'm so, myself. I'm sorry. You I can't use the word feminist. We, women let deserve me, let me better tell you than something. abortion. Let me tell you something, Bernadette. Over the last 200 years, the, the number one driving force that has enabled women to be liberated is control of their own conception and control of their own but reproduction. But not the control of another baby, and not of listen, another I body. Even a non-born child is a separate started. body. I've barely We're started. We're talking about another body. Started. Just, I'll, I'll interject just to yeah. say um, welcome to the viewers and just reminding you that this is uh, the debate on abortion if you haven't uh, if you've only just tuned in we normally have a sort of two minute response from each side but it's it's an interesting debate and I'll try and be fair to both sides okay you, you uh, can finish Kate. no I, 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 I now uh, I'm like what was oh, I no, saying I, oh, now yeah, you've interrupted me yeah. Tim and I don't know what yeah. I was saying um, what I was saying is this is